Hey guys, welcome back to more Persona 5. And today, it's time to get to gambling and winning, most importantly. So let's check out the member's floor here in Nijima's Palace. And hi, I want 15 billion stick of coin. I got millions, literally just get me up to that next floor, please. And welcome to the member's floor. We've received word of your coming. Oh, that is not good. Uh, so all of this is going according to her plan. I cannot help but feel we're being manipulated here. I know we are, actually, and first, we will be providing you with a welcome gift. Please accept these coins. What? Free money? What the dumb kind of casino is this? He's just giving them to us? I know, right? What the heck? It's pretty rare. Perhaps this is a show of confidence. It seems she truly has no intention of losing. Uh, maybe, and... Now then, the left of the counter is the dice game area, while to the right are the slots. Please head to whichever strikes your fancy. I'd prefer to do neither, but uh... By the way, we believe beginners will find the dice game area more suitable to their tastes. I don't like your tone, sir. <laughs> whatever. And furthermore, this is a map of the members' floor. Please accept it. Fine. Whatever. Can I sell this for more coins, though? That means we should probably start with the dice game, right? I guess, and... Ah, uh, one more thing. Casino coins will be exchanged for prizes at the very counter. Please feel free to ask us about this service. Prizes? What do you think we can get from here? Healing items randomly and our most desired prize is a member's card for entry to the high limit floor. However, the price of exchange for this item is 50,000 coins. Whoa, boy. Well, hey, we're almost there, right? And I see. I believe I have figured out Saison's intent behind this. All right, what's going on, man? She wants us to obtain that card by winning coins in the casino. That's absurd. 50,000 coins, that's more than... Yeah, a lot. And <laughs> we also allow players to borrow coins if need be, up to the current total on their card. I don't want to do that! I want cash to a weird casino inside someone's head is... It's way too scary, yeah, and kind of weird. Oh well, standing around here won't get us anywhere. So, should we head to the dice game? Mmm, I don't know. That seems, I kind of want to do the slots, actually. Do you mind if I speak to you all beforehand? There's something on my mind. All right, man, what's going on? Even though you're already kind of talking to us. So, our two options are dice and slots. It would not surprise me in the least if they were rigged somehow. Wait, really? Y you think she's cheating? Mm, remember that this is a courthouse in the real world. Saison is quite particular about winning here. To compound that, defendants in Japan are prosecuted at a rate of 99.9%. Victory is nigh unattainable. How can a percentage like that really be possible? All those verdicts are the correct ones? Not exactly. The investigators are human too, after all. Then... Yes. You're not the first to point out the rigged nature of this system. The prosecution is near unbeatable. That's why cases of false accusations cause such a stir. They are exceedingly rare. But it's total BS get arrested, even when you're not guilty! Indeed. If we do not hurry, the Phantom Thieves will fall victim to a similar fate. Jeez. We're gonna win this, no matter what. Heck yeah. I mean, we have to, but... Yeah, little known facts. People often talk about how safe Japan is, but they soon forget that aspect of it that... Yeah, if you get, a uh, Just marked as guilty, there's very slim chances that you're going to be able to just not go to jail. That's just how it is, unfortunately. And welcome to the slot room. Here you'll be playing a game that requires you to match the pattern on the rotating wheels. I'm randomly British. We're here to win coins, not play your game. That's, that, that's how we win coins, though. I am uh, well aware of that. Though, to be perfectly honest, I've been granted permission to kill every last one of you here. Oh. Well, how rude of you. Well, bring it on. But uh, be, be careful on the slot machine. We don't want to break that glass. It just cause a big scene. And this is Kumhanda. Kumhanda. I don't actually remember his name. He's kind of irrelevant. Now this guy. Oh, never mind. So this guy is uh, incredibly fast and just likes to spam Rage War on you. But uh, yeah, because he's literally bones. He's literally like a skeleton man. He is not going to survive. Well, I guess both of them. I don't know why I'm saying singular there, but yeah, they're really weak. They're normally weak to ice, but not in that little boss battle. Kind of weird like that, but yeah, they're dead. It appears as though 
These interferences are unavoidable. We must be ever vigilant. Yeah. Wait, why didn't the guests around us react to that battle? I don't know, maybe we weren't loud enough and... It is probably due to Saison's perception of the other people in the courtroom. Perhaps as she sees it, they only care for their own victory, while ignoring the needs of others. You're right. That reaction is certainly different from what we saw on the lower floor. I wonder if that trend grows stronger the higher up you go in the court system. It is possible. In any case, we can now freely access the slot room. We should go look around. Although I doubt we will find a fair fight waiting for us in the scamming casino. So, yeah, now you're starting to figure it out. The fact that, yeah, you literally just can't win here is why she sees the courthouse as a casino. And dang, there's a lot of slots! I would expect they're all rigged to prevent us from ever winning. Then should we deal with that first? No. I believe it would be prudent to examine the slot area further. Casinos hold their high limit slots somewhere in the back. If we were going to circumvent their trick, would it not be more efficient to do so on those? That's assuming we've been able to solve the problem. <laughs> I trust in your ability to handle such a matter. Alright! Let's go look for that sweet, sweet slot machine! Yeah, before I do that, hey, look at this thing. Hey. Y you want to get this now, trust me. Is that a terminal? Can you mess with it and figure out how they're cheating, Oracle? Uh, well, this one's on standby. Um... Basically, I'm gonna have to, like, activate it remotely from a main terminal somewhere else. I see. So, this one is useless unless we can access the main hub. Oh well, we should at least commit this place to memory for now. And yeah, it'll be on your map, trust me. You want to get that right now so you don't have to backtrack, but, uh, yeah! There's a bunny girl- oh my god, there it is. There's a bunny girl shadow, god dang Atlas. Literally knows what I want out of a video game, but, uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of clever. And god dang, that's a lot of girls. All right. Let's knock them all out, but, uh, I really want to talk about just more in-depth exactly why this is such an issue. A lot of people may be thinking, oh, 99% uh, conviction rate, who gives a crap? And, <gasps> okay, my story of justice will have to wait. We gotta see this right now. Get him, Akechi! Power up your lightsaber. Oh my god, is that not the coolest thing in the world? I'm so happy I got that on camera. Cool boy. That is really cool, but yeah, back to, uh, justice and all that, um, you might be thinking, okay, you know what, it's 99% conviction rate, right? But they only get the really bad people. You could not be more incorrect. Sure, there isn't a lot of crime in Japan, but what costs? Now, pardon me if I get anything wrong, I'm just gonna say all of this just like, I don't have any notes, this is just secondhand knowledge, but there have been countless cases over the years of Japan where a completely innocent man or woman have been sent to jail with just no argument. I want to bring up this first person as I run to the Velvet Room to fuse up more personas. <laughs> this is how I like to do videos, I don't know why, it's just kind of strange like that, but uh... Let's talk about one specific man who comes to mind, Kazuo Ishikawa, who... You won't actually find a lot of information on on the internet because... Well, Japan's government simply doesn't want you to know about him, but, uh... So, to make a long story short, 1963, the town of Sayama in the Saitama Prefecture in Japan. Mr. Ishikawa was charged with a crime that he physically could not commit. And the only reason he was convicted and interrogated for 30 days until he pleaded guilty was because the police have more power than the citizen. And this is sadly a thing that still goes on today. So the crime in which he was charged with was that of kidnapping and a ransom note for a girl that was kidnapped. This ransom note was written and asked for 200,000 yen to get the girl back. The ransom was not met and she was unfortunately found dead in a field. The police at the time could not find the perpetrator so they pinned the crime on and I forget the just term for the man, but he was a... Oh, gosh. Ba not a delinquent, but basically someone who is not very wealthy. I don't like to use the word, uh, ho like, he wasn't homeless, but he was, like, getting there, right? Because post-World War II, Japan, not the best place economically. Also, Bayako's a really cool persona. We're gonna level him up. But back to my really depressing story. So, the police didn't want to come back empty-handed. So they pinned the crime on this man um, and forced him to, well, basically confess to the crime. During the investigation, they forced him to sign his signature to 
a confessional. But the problem was, he could not have written this. I don't really want Unicorn. <laughs> it's a better persona. There we go. Close, though. Ah, oh, crap. That's not enough. God dang it. I need to finish the story. Whatever. I guess we'll just sack Os. I don't really need him for anything, but... Here's the crux of the situation. Mr. Ishikawa was illiterate. He could not write. He could not read. So how could he create a ransom note, abduct somebody, and do all these things? And at the time of the crime being committed, he was eating food with his friend, like family. Like, so <laughs> the argument here to make is, oh, obviously the family would try and defend him because it's their father. But still, at the same time, that's his testimony. He was somewhere else. That just sheer lack of not like taking evidence into account just to try. And he's still, to this day, trying to prove his innocence. He basically had life in jail. And has only recently, like, gotten out and trying to, like, yeah, I was innocent. Like, I don't know, man. And this isn't the only time this has happened. A more recent, just, event was Keiko Aoki, who, granted, not as recent. She's, this also happened, I believe, in the 70s. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong about that, actually. Heck, if I ever have my notes. <laughs> but, uh... It will receive she, um, was charged with the murder of her own daughter, who died in a freak accident. Essentially, uh, she filed a life insurance policy on her daughter, right? And, unfortunately, in the apartment next to where they lived, okay. there was a fire in the garage. And the garage was adjacent to the bathroom in which her daughter was, you know, taking a bath in. And she died, and the police were like, well, this is very suspicious. You obviously must have killed your daughter. And she constantly said, no, it was an accident. I did not do it. Why would I kill my own daughter? She's, you know, means the world to me. But the police interrogated her for almost as long as Mr. Ishikawa and just basically told her and lied to her during the interrogation that your husband has already confessed to all your crimes. You might as well just sign because it's over and... She did. She was broken down. And this is sadly what this game is trying to like portray to us in the form of an allegory that if you get convicted of a crime in Japan and charged with it, chances are you're probably going to jail unless you're extremely powerful or have wealth. Also, Fortuna is god dang amazing in this game. It's pretty fitting that we're fusing the goddess of luck as we're entering the casino. But yeah, I really like her 3D model. She's cute, but uh... There is a uh, very famous saying from Benjamin Franklin, one of my founding fathers, who said it's better that a hundred guilty persons escape than that one innocent man should suffer. Because the guilty guy is probably going to become guilty again, sure, but like, if the innocent guy is in prison for life, he's never going to see the light of day again, and it just, I don't know. Maybe I have too much empathy at times, but stuff like that seriously does bother me, and your luck's gonna come. It will! Anyways, here's your mask. Thanks, Fortuna. Anyways. I don't know why I decided to just randomly vent about all this, uh, misjustice in the world, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Back to being funny, man! <laughs> Anyways, um... I just wanted to get that out there, because a lot of people really don't see the connection why Seisan's palace is a casino, and I just thought I'd enlighten you guys on that, but... Now that we have our new personas equipped, let's get back to the palace and kick some butt and god dang. Wait till you see these tier 3 magic skills. Oh man. You better see some damage, and that's all I gotta say, but hopefully you can draw some parallels from the real world stories that I told you to the story in this game, but uh... Yeah, now that we've taken care of that, let's head up to the members floor again with our new powerful personas. And I didn't actually show off the backgrounds of any of them. I probably should do that, huh? So, Fortuna. Actually, no, we did show that one off. Let's show up Horus, though. God dang. He's a very bright boy. I like him. He's uh, pretty cool. I, I probably will show him off first in battle now that we have Hamon on him. Pretty strong attack, but an ancient god of Egypt whose eyes are the sun and moon. Revealed by some as the chief god who is often depicted as a hawk. Or a falcon. Yeah. Oh, I really liked his uh, persona appearance like a lot. And crap, did I... Where the crud did that other one go? Didn't I make three persona? I'm pretty sure I did. Am I an idiot? Oh, no, wait. I put that on Fortuna, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. But, um, she's pretty powerful, too. Really just need Bufudan and, you know, Garudan. I would make more spells and actually feed, um, a persona to Mitras to get Freydine. 
but I don't really need to do that right now. We can more or less handle ourselves very easily inside this palace, but... Might as well talk about this right now, actually. There's no downside to doing this, but this guy right here sells you the Soma and a B chain. You might as well just buy these items, I'll be honest with you. Getting the high limit card is not going to be very difficult for us, but... Now let's head over to the dice game! Yay! I don't like dice games. Ever since Dungeon Dice Monsters, it's just... It's too hard, man, and... This is the dice game area. What a distasteful place. I know, the colors clash and... Ugh, it's so chaotic. Yeah, I guess. That's not really how a normal high schooler would describe it. <laughs> in any case, we should proceed further in. Alright, let's get it. So, uh... Yeah, the dice area. It's apparently where novices go to play. Alright, whatever. One of the rooms is already open. Let's check it out. Hello there, sir. Welcome to the dice game room. Please enjoy the simple game in which you guess the total number that will appear on three cast dice. A correct prediction will double your bet, while three matching dice will triple it. More importantly, making sixes is a supreme victory. Regardless of what your initial bet was, the payout will be quintuple. All right, sweet. Buy-in for this game is 25 casino coins. Want to play? Heck yeah, let's go, boy. Deal me. Well then, please predict the total of the three dice. All right, so you can pick between three and 10 or 11 and 18. Now there's a trick to this. If you pick 11 and 18 the first time and then three and 10, you're guaranteed to get at least a good payout. So, okay, we lost the first game. That's totally fine. House wins, whatever. But if we pick this, like the first option next, we should get way better result. I'm pretty sure. So now we're gonna pick three and 10. We're dropping a little bit on our money, but that's, oh crap. All right, Uh, right, let's just try that again. God dang it. So much for my strategy, we just lost all her money. That's why I don't gamble, kids. Joker. Joker, can I have a word? Do you remember what I mentioned a moment ago? Yeah, something about them cheating. Oh, crap. You mean the cheating? Yeah, even if we continue playing here, there's no chance of victory. We should retreat for the time being. All right. But we won't be able to earn coins if we don't play. Yes, that is exactly why we'll be stopping them from rigging the game. Considering the scale of this operation, I doubt they are cheating via analog methods. I expect there is a control room of sorts that determines the win percentages for the entire area. So, we'll strike, all right. Let's go look for anywhere that seems suspicious. Yeah. Okay, realistically, you don't have to do that. I just wanted to show that dialogue of a catchy being cool, but uh, yeah, there's not really a lot of areas we can check out in here and just no matter which room you enter, they're all gonna be the same thing. So you're just hoping to eventually find right here yeah, it's the only way in, and it seems to lead somewhere. Should we check it out, Joker? Okay, but, man. Imagine how many ventilation shafts we ent have entered in this game. Our clothes will be so goddamn dusty, but... I kind of like that, you know? It, it reels you into, like, oh, yeah, this is totally fine. You can gamble, and just, you can literally never win in the current state of things. And is this the back room? Super convenient, don't you think? Anyway, based on what Crow was saying, the game here are all rigged. Oh, so we're gonna catch him in the act! I guess that's easy. Come on, let's get to it! Heck yeah, so, yet again, another back room area. That's really the only, like, small criticism I have about this whole palace. They use this, like, environment a couple of times, but at the same time, I can't really blame them, and they are actually pretty darn different and crud. Should we try even get this guy? Uh, dang it. <laughs> He actually absorbs wind attack, so I can't show off Garudine. So let's actually show off Bufudine from Fortuna! It looks really cool. It makes like a tree of ice. I love that animation so much. But, uh. Speaking of new animations, let's show off Deadly Fury. Mmm! God dang, that looks so cool. It's a really powerful attack as well, but, uh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the game actually does a lot. I don't give it enough credit. And, like, I'm trying to, like, rectify, like, just the tiny little things I never did in past Persona vid like, just Persona games in general. Like, in the past, I kind of felt like I just, like, all right, took everything at surface value You never really try to dive into what's really going on. And that's something I try to change at least a little bit with this playthrough, just, like, really drill in the concepts that the game is trying to introduce to you instead of, like, whoa, it's so cool being a fan of the Volta! Which, I mean, granted, good battle. Yes, that was a good battle. Uh, I did that a lot also in the very beginning, just like, oh my gosh, everything looks so good! But, now it's time to get serious and talk about what the crud is really, like, going on, what the game's really trying to teach you. But then again, I am way too goddamn hard on myself with videos, as is, and god dang, we're faster than Yusuke now? 
That's impressive, but uh, I guess we can show off Garudon as the Divine Warrior. I love this spell effect so goddamn much. I don't even care if it was resisted. I just feel like doing it, so let's take down these power. Do I really want to recruit them? Uh, it could be helpful, I guess. Have we actually showed off Eggha yet? No. I guess we have? Have we? Yeah, that's the same one. I thought he had his next one yet. Crap, but uh... Let's just baton pass back to the main character and just get the Aiga, like, out, I suppose, but... Hmm, does... Nah, we'll just have to do that. I'll just show off Horus when we're not fighting, uh, just lawfully aligned characters, I suppose, but... Man, all in all, this palace, like, I can't really describe why I like it so much. Like, now that I, like, got into it in the series, I'm like, crap, what are all the good things about it? I think it's just something once you look back on, you're like, dang, that was kind of cool, and... Oh, snap, we got it! She's gonna give all the items! Dude, I like that. Kind of does slow down the gameplay a bit, though. It should be like a little icon that just came up like, yeah, it's back. That'd be kind of helpful, but I understand, you know, the game's got to load and stuff. But lately, I've been thinking a lot about, like, stories and games and some of my favorite ones. The, the, my favorite games are just, like, they don't, like, become preachy. They're just like, all right, here's the themes. Here's what we're trying to say. We're not going to, you know, just talk your ear off about it. It's like, being bad is bad. You know, like, Persona, in my eyes, has done... A incredibly great job at that and please oh man I swear to god I was mashing X there which is a little bit salty but yeah you scared will stick and die that would have sucked but really a lot of like what this game storytelling is all about is just like it wants you to think for yourself because at its core Persona is a series based on Jungian philosophy which I mean you know it's just all about the world around you or not the world around you but you know your inner self and all that bullcrap which I mean I don't know why I haven't made a, like an individual just video talking about how it relates to Persona, but I think the creators actually did like a really good job relating it, its like core philosophies to like actual gameplay and its characters. I'm a real big fan. I don't know, but realistically, I'm no like philosophy major or anything. Heck, I don't major in anything anymore. Um, from what I understand, Jungian philosophy is really outdated and just like kind of a uh, not really a cult, but uh. What's the word I'm looking for? I might as well just do that. It's really not practical in the real world, but hey, it's a really cool thing to base a video game off of, and I'm gonna feel terrible if it's like, well, actually, no, there is, like, you know, a basis there. I don't feel like a giant Dumbo, but yeah, there's really not a good, like, chance to use Horus here at all. I mean, I just, ugh. It totally stinks how you don't get to use any of, like, the really, really cool personas until, like, a little bit later. I think they could have been, like, a little bit better about balancing crap like that, like... What level are we right now? Like, 49? I think if, like, we just increase that to 50, we'd be so much better off, and... What is up with this palace and levitating girls? I don't know. I guess it's, like, trying to focus just on, like, the feminine... Oh crap, I screwed up. Is that gonna reflect back at me? Oh, no, it's just blocked. Okay, thank goodness, but... It's really trying to focus on the femininity... I really hope I said that right. Of, say, there's a lot of, uh, very strong female, um, shadows, such as the Valkyrie, uh, Queen Mob. Kikuri Hime, not really powerful by any means, but she's definitely strong, and... Wait, what? You gonna join me? Hey, okay, yeah, join my cause, heck yeah. I love conversations such as this! I remember now. I'm you, Queen Mob, heck yeah, but, uh... I just really wanted to bring this up about Seisan. Now, I don't know if you can tell. Big fan of her character and her design. Sure, she's not the nicest to her little sister, but she's got a lot of crap going on, and she's obviously, like... Okay. In my eyes... The best designed, like, just character, just from an aesthetic, and I really like that her distortions are very real, like, you know, being worked that much, like, Japanese society, okay. god dang, you're gonna work a lot, and that's extremely draining, I'd imagine, and just having to take care of your little sister, too, I mean, she probably doesn't think that way, like, oh, I have to take care of my sister now that my dad's dead, no, it's probably something along the lines of, my father's dead, but, you know, I still love my sister, etc. And sure, in some of the cutscenes we've seen, she's, like, incredibly cold. But, like, I don't know. I think it's very realistic to, like, how someone in real life would actually act. And that's why I really liked her character, but... This place looks safe. Ugh. Yeah, enough of me being the, uh, say son, <laughs> uh, fan club, I guess. I'll actually talk more later about, like, her shadow and why I think it's, like... Really well designed, actually. Obviously, they wanted to make a very, uh, sexy character, but a lot of times in Persona, you know, the, uh, female characters, I don't really feel like are really villainized enough. I find this, like, a problem in fiction where it's, like, 
not with Atlas, really. They've actually had some fantastic female villains over the years, but um, they're just really afraid to uh, make a girl a bad guy. I, I noticed that in a lot of, like, just media that I consume, and I'm like, why the heck? Like, I grew up just, like, on, like... I don't know if they're trying to reference uh, Batman, but one of the, like the series that I personally love that really had oh my gosh I forgot how cool that one looked um had the really fantastic female villains was uh the Batman animated series and just Batman as a whole and I always oh my gosh dude maybe it just says who I am as a person but holy crud dude Catwoman Poison Ivy I don't really like Harley that much I was kind of afraid of clowns at, like <laughs> the first no I was like in kindergarten when I was watching that show God dang I was in I did a thing for girls, like, way earlier than god dang I probably should have, but, uh... Yeah, I always, like, just fell for, like, the villainous characters. I don't know. So I, like, definitely, like, appreciate, you know, a good female... Or femme fatale, I guess. I guess that's not really even a really good thing. And where the cru- I swear to god, I should encounter the treasure demon here, because... I finally figured out how it works. It's, like, not on a timer at all. It's just, like, how many chests you activate. Yeah, I think it's over there. Should we backtrack and get it? I probably should, but, uh... Yeah, so, technically, if I, like, play ahead and figure out where the treasure demon is on a file, then revert my save. It's gonna be in that same exact chest, which actually makes recording videos way god dang easier, and... Is it over here or not? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna spend, like, way too long looking for this thing, but I'm determined. Actually, you know what? I know it's gonna appear in a different spot. Oh, no, it's right here! Holy crud! Okay, so, this, if I've done my research totally right, should be... Yes! The treasure demon. It took me 97 episodes right to figure that bull crap out, but this is Orlov. And he is uh pretty cool. We're just going to not do that. Um he basically resists no, he completely nullifies everything except physical yet again, so you have to luck out and get a crit. Or if you have the special attack, he'll go down no problem. Makes getting treasure demons so much easier, god dang, but it's one thing I've always been really interested in with the uh Especially the Persona series as a whole. I've always just wanted to like figure out like how is damage calculated? What the dump is all out attack damage? Like, you know, how do we figure that crap out? And uh, the formulas are actually very convoluted and not very good, which is probably why the game doesn't actually tell you. But for those who aren't aware, all out attacks are actually linked to the total like melee weapon damage that you have. I didn't know that for years, and I only discovered it with uh, Persona 3, actually, which I think it's been the same in all the games, but... Let's check out Orlov's background, cause why the- Crap, <laughs> hit the wrong button. Cause why the heck not, and a diamond stolen from a Hindu temple that is said to drive its owner to their death. It was cut into smaller pieces in an attempt to break the curse. And now I have it. Great, but yeah, just another treasure demon. Does the same thing as all the others, but... Just wanted to grab that, I almost forgot about him, but... Yeah, progressing onward, but uh... Just the whole thing, like, on how, like, cut-in attacks are, like, calculated, etc. That's always been really fascinating for me, because... I don't think the game has ever referenced, like, okay, this is why this happens, and this is the chance of it happening. It usually just defaults, yeah, it's the luck stat, you know, don't really worry about it too much. Look at all these servers, dude. I don't know. The whole, like, uh, fusion of cognition here is pretty cool, my ass guy. I ain't even talking about the shadows here, though. Jeez, I don't know why not. They're just kind of... It's kind of face roll, I don't know. You just kind of die, I guess, but, you know, that's kind of part of the course, and- Oh, crud, we- Oh, god, this is bad. We might actually die. Oh, my god, back-to-back -back crits, okay. Actually, no, uh, people can just take that blow for me. What am I thinking? Gosh, I have, uh, well, Ketchy can't withstand an attack for me. Oh, man, he dodged, but, uh, definitely Yusuke can. Unless it's an AoE attack like that, god dang. All right, we are in trouble. Let's, um... Do we try and go for the Madoon? Against the Valkyrie. That would definitely help us out. Okay, I have an idea. Let's go for the Aegon to get this uh, unicorn. Just <laughs> right after I said, oh yeah, these sticker enemies, they're so easy, dude. I don't give a crap. Um, let's go for the Madoon. It might work on the Valkyrie. Ugh. Okay, that was a gamble, but it's fine. Um, I'm just going to be on the safe side. Set up the Tetracorn for the main character. I just do not want him to die. Because that means we all die, so... <laughs> Even sits down. When he gets knocked down, he even looks cool. God dang, this game is too much, dude. But, uh. Let's just think about this. Yeah, the guard down would actually be the best way to go. And I just realized for this whole playthrough, you've never actually heard the second verse of this song. Because usually, we don't have battles last. Okay, this is not the second verse. That's not what I mean. But the next part after this. I don't think you guys have ever heard that. What is wrong with me? I don't know. I've just been like. 
doing these battles too quickly, I guess. And god dang. Right, they're really not going for the main character. I'm digging that, but at the same time, eh, kind of annoying, but... That just, like, is a testament to how well, like, just you can select your moves and everything in this game. I know I've been just praising it non-stop for, like, the whole playthrough, but can you blame me? It's pretty great. Just gotta say that. Man, I love this song, especially in crap. I thought you had more HP, you skate. I'm sorry! I was trying to use the new attack. Oh, well, whatever. This should end pretty quickly. Hopefully, this attack will hit. Nice. Okay. That was potentially really dangerous. God, I gotta stop getting uh, attacked, but... Yeah, the shadows are starting to get a little more uh, evil. And especially on the uh, slots side, we actually picked the easy part, but... You know, you can actually do it in any order, but eventually you're gonna have to progress through both of them. But, and we're on a roll. So many casino puns and crap, there's one right there. Could you imagine how hard this game would be if you didn't have the little red dots on your uh, mini-map? God. It'd actually be a stealth game at that point, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought, like, when we eventually did get P5, it was going to be, like, actual stealth gameplay. And I mean, I don't know. I think they made a really good compromise. I'm not criticism, like, criticizing them. Criticizing them. Criticizing them on that front. But I don't know. I just feel like my expectations for the game and what it actually turned out to be, not the same. But they actually impressed me in a lot of different ways. So I'm not complaining by any means. I've got the parrying dagger. Which I don't even think is an upgrade, come to think of it. But, uh... This is the weirdest door in the game. Why does it matter that we open it from this side, but... Yeah. We're starting to, like, run into a lot of, uh, repeating encounters, so I'm probably not going to show any more battles for this episode, but... Hey, we're almost at the end, so I guess that's fine, come to think of it. And can we really not scale this? Oh, yeah, there's nothing over there, I guess, but it totally looks like we can, but... Anyways, this is where we need to head to, to stop all the gambling, cheating. It's this guy, and crap, are we healed up? Yeah, we have enough SP to do this. We should be fine. Looks like we thought the calculations of the rigging are on their monitor now. So, this is the cheating control room. What should we do, Joker? I don't know, run away because we can't beat- No, heck yeah, we're gonna beat him up! Very well. Let us dispatch it swiftly. Okay, how did I miss the <laughs> Just imagine you're just doing your job. Alright, just holding the wine bottle, checking out that we're cheating, and oh my god, we can get a hit bullet hail on this? Poor Neveros, man, but uh... Then just a bunch of teens come out of nowhere, rip your mask off. How rude. Anyways, this is Neboros. Well, I guess we're finally gonna show Horus' attack off because he is weak to bless damage. Not much of a mini boss fight. I, I honest to God, really wish this guy was a little bit harder, but uh, yeah, one cow gone is gonna make him gone. It's technically cow gone, whatever. He's dead, all out attack. Get the heck out of here, servant of Lucifer. Kind of, I don't know. His origin is all over the place, if you really think about it. And what, that didn't finish him off? I'm actually impressed, but, uh... Yeah, realistically, I'd uh, love to really tell you what he can do. I, I probably think it's curse damage and status ailments, because that's what he usually does, but I could be wrong. But yeah, he, he dies really fast every playthrough, I swear to God. I've never actually seen his moves, and man, everyone leveled up! Dude, we them boys and girls, but yeah, now we can stop the cheating, now that Nebros isn't watching us. And all that bull crap, and god dang. He usually has so many amazing moves, and we never get to see him in battle, because I used him for the whole beginning of the game, and... How does he have more endurance than str That's kind of weird. Do I, did I give him equipment to boost his endurance? I don't think I did, actually. And, oh, snap! Morgana got Dio Rahan, so now he has a 100% heal to one person, solidifying him as the best healer in the game. And god dang, everyone's getting amazing moves. Pretty helpful, though, because... Getting towards that part of the game, unfortunately, but yeah. I can't believe there's a facility like this in here. Sis must really want to win. Well, naturally, it's her palace. Come on, we should stop the rigging. Mm, hold on a moment. I have an idea I'd like to discuss. Aw, oh, man. Lay it on me. What's going on? What do you want to talk about? I've devised an easier way of doing this. A way to get all the coins we need. All of them in here? Is that even possible? It is now. I've deduced how to win the games. Uh, okay, lay it on us, man. And indeed, do we use the equipment here to our advantage to rig the game in our favor? <gasps> That's genius! You can do that? Hmm, wait, this is a job for me. It'll be a breeze. Yeah, if we can have it go against us, I'm sure it can go with us, right? And 
Cheating seems somehow wrong, though. This is our benefit, Haru, <laughs> and the odds here are stacked against us. We would never win if we stuck to normal methods. We do not have any time to waste either. It would be best for us to focus on our objective. You're right. Changing my sister's heart is the ultimate goal here. I feel bad asking this, but... May we borrow your expertise yet another time, Oracle? Why do you feel bad? That's her role, and... I'm game. But man, you sure give a lot of orders for a noob. Uh, good point, but... Yeah, I guess he knows what he's doing. Okay, I rigged one of the rooms in our favor. Just like Crow said. The other rooms should at least be back to normal. Honest gambling now, too. Anyway, I marked our special room on the map. Make sure you use that one. Perfect. Now let us head into the fray. Guys. Stick it against you, dude, it cracks me up, but yeah, so by defeating that shadow, we can now gamble here completely worry-free. It's kind of nice, and I don't know, I never actually checked out the rest of this room before. It looks cool. There's way too many computers, though. For <laughs> Look at that goddamn monitor! That thing is freaking huge, goddamn. Yeah, now all we gotta do is work our way back and start gambling again. And the game is nice enough to leave us this little shortcut. I like it when games do that. It's very nice. And especially when the game's just like, hey, you want to teleport back here or just want to keep on exploring. Every goddamn game needs to do that at some point. Just I hate backtracking unless there's like actually something to do to make it worthwhile. Like in Metroid games, they've always just excelled at that. But man, in some of the older Persona games, oh. We're not going to talk about that now, though. Instead, let's get to... Uh, Gambling the night away, so we can get our uh, coins and get the heck out of here. Welcome to the dice game. Uh, you already know how this works, so yes, I do. God dang, let's play and standard buy-in. And wow, what a surprise! We are currently running a grand raise promotion. Both buy-in and payment are five times the normal amount. A single customer is limited to four plays. Joker, just four? Dang! And there's no need to worry. We most certainly win. The buy-in is 125 coins. We like to play the game. I'm down. I think our luck's a little bit better this time, and very good, sir. Please predict the total of the three dice. Um, between 11 and 18. I think we're gonna get all sixes. Now that'd be way too easy to get. Never mind. Amazing! A supreme victory. Your payout is 625 coins. Would you like to continue playing? Of course we would. Be on extra lucky. <laughs> I love this so much. Just literally fighting the system and turning it in our favor. Man, that's just. There's something inherently cool about that, and oh wow, all sixes again! Imagine that! Yes. You bet we do. God, the guy's probably so mad, like, how is this possible? Well, then again, he's probably just a cognitive being and just kind of goes with the flow, I imagine. But yeah, you know what? We don't even care if we get caught. Let's just keep doing it until we get the amount of coins we need. Yeah. Wait, we, we'd be here for literally ever. We're only getting like 200, like. Uh, how much to say one is to win, man? Alright, let's just keep it going, I guess. Try to get more sixes. Yay, we won. Wait, that was the fourth supreme victory. That's impossible! It's nothing's impossible when you cheat. Hot dang, we got a crap ton of coins! You've retrieved the device. Our next move is up to you, Joker. I thought we were gonna win here! I wanna go somewhere else? Yeah, I guess we kinda have to. And if you're at all curious, you can't actually just gamble at the other facilities if you feel yeah, you know screw it, I might as well show it up. So it is technically like possible to lose now, but in case for whatever reason you just legitimately wanted to play the dice game, you can do that. But uh yeah, you don't really get as much. I don't know if it's actually possible to grind up so much to where you could get 50k just from this. I don't know anyone dumb enough to try, but I imagine it's actually not possible. So yeah, we're gonna stop for right now and well, we got 3k coins, it's not amazing, but it's a start, I suppose, and we won a lot! That was fun, don't get addicted on, and how we reached our goal, not even close, bro. Yeah, it still may not be enough. Are you seriously planning on taking every last coin in here? <laughs> it was a joke. However, it'd be nice to have a little more coinage on hand, would it not? Well, everyone, wait here. Skull, I would like you to come with me. Uh, why me? Because... I am the brains here, am I not? Hey man, back off my boy! Uh, oh sure. Yeah, we can't really argue. Time to see what he's made of. Yeah, what the heck you planning, Akechi? He was right. That was amazing! It was like magic! I could totally get addicted to this! Where are Crow and Skull? Sorry about the wait. Oh, 
hole. So heavy. Okay, how is that 6,000 coins? Like, what the... Amazing, we managed to get our hands on 6,030 coins! Still far away from how many we need, though. We still have a long way before we reach our goal, though. Now then, to the slot machines. So yes, now that we have this wing of the casino totally cleared out, next time on Persona 5, it's time we take on the slot machines and wrap up this palace and eventually get that key so we can progress onward. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little story about Japanese society and how it relates to this video game and how sometimes, yeah, something may appear to be fair, but it's a truly unjust game. But that is all the time I have for today. Next time on Persona 5, we're getting that goddamn card. So see you guys then. Bye.